Welcome to this event. I lead the Ignite Network Plus from the University of Strathclyde. And we are sort of innovation and growth needs inclusion and engagement of all talent in energy research. So, oh, 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 oh well, you can see that. <laughs> so this is us. So, um, um, you need some light. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's better. No, I can't. It's, it's on or off. Okay. Um, Sorry. Oh, well, never mind. Um, so this is us. Um, there are three people here from Strathclyde, Marco, myself and Claire, and then we have Anna from Imperial, Tandre who couldn't make it today from Nottingham, uh, Neha from University of Bristol, Jess who you've met already from Manchester, Aoife who's also at Manchester but couldn't be here today, and Mustafa who's from Brunel. So we are the group sort of team, the management team, but the network is more than that, it's everybody. I'm going to skip through this because I think I'll just leave this one up because we don't have too much time, but um, this just shows you diversity in the UK energy sector. Just pick two things that I could find data for, the rest I couldn't really decide of the person represents the, what there is in the UK population and the darker one is what you have um, in the energy pop in the energy sector. And you can see um, essentially that both fame individuals and women are grossly underrepresented in the energy sector by their demographic in the population. Um, I still find that when I talk to young people at university, and I, I remember thinking exactly the same thing myself, so I'm not in any way blaming, but I remember thinking I can do it on my own, I have what I need to do this, um, and I'm as good as any bloke. Um, and I do remember entirely thinking that I didn't require any support. And I have found that in my career, that excellence is not necessarily enough. And that actually there are systematic barriers and that's what this network is about. It's about trying to identify some of those systemic barriers, think about innovative ways of removing them rather than the sort of Historic, I mean, we've been working for years and years on inequalities, particularly on, for women, um, which has been on the agenda for a very long time. And actually very little has changed. And I think that is largely because it focuses on the individuals rather than the barriers in front of them. So we, it's a deficit model. We focus on more and more training for individuals, be they from ethnic minority or disability, disabled backgrounds or from or be they female, to jump over the hurdles in front of them, rather than to think about unpicking the hurdles that, that make the playing field not level in the first place. So these are just some of the examples of um, findings around things like citations, women get less cited, uh, the very, very poor numbers of black university professors um, in the UK. Um, and the, yeah, so it goes on. There's a very little information about LGBTQ, actually, particularly in STEM. Um, subject areas, so there's very little, um, and there's not a lot on disabilities either. There's a Royal Society report, but there's quite a dearth of data in those areas. There's masses on women. Um, not might not solve the problem, but there's an awful lot of studies. So, um, so the aim here is to change the conversation and make it not around training people, but around the barriers and organisations. Um, in the organisations in front of them and to think about how we might design disruptive initiatives to get around them. I'm not going to go through the objectives because it's too long. So these are the, we have a number of activities that the network is doing that were prescribed in our bid in the first place that are part of the network and you're going to hear about one or two of those today. Um, so I won't say any more about them, but we also have flexible funding opportunities. We've given one round of flexible funding opportunities in EDI out and one People are going to have a talk about the projects they received later on this afternoon. Um, but there's also a round ongoing at the moment, which is starting with a sandpit for energy funding projects um, led by PIs from underrepresented backgrounds. So that's happening at the moment. Um, and the sandpit, which we've already recruited to, I'm afraid, but the sand, sandpit closed and now will go on in April. So, um, I just wanted to say a little bit about the baseline activity that we're doing at Strathclyde. So ours is around data collection. Um, we want to collect data on where barriers exist and try and sort of unpick some of the things that are much less well documented, as well as thinking about intersectionality and some sections such as LBTQ+, where there's um, 
LGBTQ+, where there is rather less information um, around STEM subjects in particular. So trying to fill some of the gaps. Um, we've done a survey, we've piloted our survey at Strathclyde. So we've um, conducted a pilot survey, uh, which we will then push out to the universities that are involved in this network and anybody else that would like to run it. Essentially, you can run it Ideally, you're going to run in energy, but there is a box at the top at the beginning to tick how much energy involvement you have, so it could go out more widely. Um, and we're looking in that you can uh, select different sections. You don't have to, participants don't have to fill everything out, so they can do a shorter one. But what we're trying to look at is the climate that you're in and the support, the challenges and behaviours that you experience, but also things like the time spent at different career let stages and how that tracks to CVs and whether there's active discrimination happening on in career paths. So we have, we're trying to collect information in that area as well, apart from demographics. And just from Strathclyde at the moment, we have 236 responses. Um, and I'm only gonna, we haven't analyzed this data. So I'm only, I've just put one finding up because the, the numbers are so stark that it doesn't really require a statistical analysis to, um, to note that, the, that there's something significant going on. So these are um, people that answered the questions, um, the demographic question and the question on what role that you had within universities. And you can see on the left-hand side, we have a pie chart for the role of people that identified as straight. And on the right-hand side, we have participants that identified, I've grouped everybody together that identified as anything else, essentially. Um, and what you, can, what you can see already is that there's a very stark difference in the percentage of academics um, in the data set. And you have to wonder why there are fewer LGBTQ plus academics as a proportion of the data and that's something obviously we'll be looking at in the richness there are some text boxes and things so we can look further at this but um that's just an initial result that shows a very stark difference and we need to unpick why that might be so i'm just going to finish off by saying where we are with the network so we have more than 230 members you fill out some information about yourself when you join and you can meet people through this you can do that for research purposes as well as just networking purposes so please do make sure you've joined hopefully everybody who's here has but please encourage your friends to join um in terms of the membership itself, that is our age demographic on the left. So most people at the moment are between 30 and 50 that have joined the network, but we do have some older and younger than that. And um, sadly, I don't fit into that category, so that one of them will be me. Um, and then we have ethnicity on the right hand side on the pie chart. So you can see that we probably don't have a representative demographic at the moment for ethnicity. So it would be good to increase the representation that we have in ethnicity. Um, we also have gender on the left hand side and sexuality on the right. So we have a reasonable spread of demographic, but we haven't looked yet to see how well it matches the population. So. But please encourage everybody to apply. And this is how you can do it. So this is our web page and social media accounts and followers. And you can email us as well. And we'll get you more. So that's the Ignite Network. Please join. <laughs>